Hi, it's Karen, and this is for Introduction to English Grammar. Uh, this is part 20. We're going to talk about imperatives and exclamatives, and a little bit more about discourse function. We'll finish up discourse function with this video. So let's talk about imperatives. So imperatives are also called commands. We usually use these to get someone to do something. Okay, the word order is the same as a declarative, except that we can actually leave the subject off. So the subject may be silent. Okay, let's look at some examples. So um, we could say with the subject, you leave this instant, um, but it's much more common actually for us to leave off the subject and just start with the verb and say, leave this instant. Okay, same thing, we could say, you bring me a cup of coffee, but we often leave off the subject um, because it's implied and we just say, bring me a cup of coffee. Okay, so in our textbook, um, it talks about the verb in the imperative. So the verb in the imperative looks as if it could be the present tense or the base form of the verb because they're often identi identical. But one way to check for this is to use the verb to be in its imperative form. Okay, and so let's go back. So if we look, if we look at these, um, these things, we have leave and we have bring, and both of those look like they could either be in the present tense or the base form. But if we instead do something like um, a to be verb, like be quiet, or be good, um, then we see that it's actually the base form of the verb, right? It's not conjugated at all to match uh, with the present tense. So um, let's talk about the prescription, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna see two of these as we talk about prescription on imperatives and interrogatives and exclamatives. So as we look at interrogatives and imperatives, right? Academic writing, we really aren't supposed to use either one. So academic writing is supposed to be composed of declarative statements, okay? Um, the reason is that if we ask a question, the audience may answer it and they may go the direction we don't want them to go, okay? It's also supposed to be detached and, and not emotional, unemotional, and uh, imperatives are seen as kind of having emotion in there as well, okay? Um, however, they can be used um, for effect in certain places. Um, but you shouldn't overuse them. And if you're having trouble deciding whether you should or shouldn't use them, it's probably better to leave them off. Okay, so um, okay, let's talk about uh, the imperative specifically. Okay, so uh, we wouldn't want to give a command to our readers. Um, that acknowledges that there is a reader, and we often are trying to stay um, back away from the reader. Okay, we also have this issue of sometimes direct imperatives are not very polite. So uh, we often use them toward children or those that are younger than us, but when we're asking an adult or someone that's our same age to do something, we couch those in a more polite way, um, more in terms of making a request to try to make them sound more appealing, okay? So um, for example, we might say something like, would you please turn off the light? We don't just say turn off the light. So in academic writing, it can be kind of an issue and very um, demanding sounding to use them. Okay, let's talk about exclamatives. So exclamatives are used to exp express something, um, commentary. So we're giving comments, but we're adding some sort of emphasis. If I just looked at these as a declarative, I might say something like, you've done a fine job, or they are petty. Those are just statements that are giving information about the world. But when I use them as an exclamative, I'm giving a lot of emphasis to express something specific, okay? So I might say something like, what a fine job you've done, or how petty they are, uh, what an intricate pattern she's woven, or how they laughed that night, okay? Sometimes we punctuate them with an exclamation point, sometimes we don't. Um, it kind of depends on a number of factors. So here's the structure for an exclamative. We have either what or how, some sort of common phrase, and then additional sentence material. Okay, except for when we're commenting on verbs. Um, in, if the thing that we are commenting about is a noun phrase, we generally use what. For all other types of phrases, we use how. Okay? So what a silly idea that is. How ordinary he seems. How neatly you write. And then here we have one with a verb, how she trembles at the sight of him. Notice that we have a word order shift as we go to commenting about the verb. Okay. Uh, we're restricted in the types of noun phrases that we can exclaim about, okay? And our book says that what is the only determiner that may appear. However, here is an example um, where we can use what and have another determiner. 
So it seems like the prescription is not 100% true in terms of usage. So we might say something like, what the heck, a very Utah thing to say. Um, we also sometimes hear that shortened to just what the, right? So what the, and then the actually becomes more like a noun phrase itself, right? So prescriptions about exclamatives. Are we supposed to use those in writings? Mm, not really. So it has to do with the moderate and unemotional. So again, exclamatives are kind of emotional, so they don't really belong in academic writing, okay? Um, this prescription is often expressed in this way. Don't use exclamation points, okay? So uh, the verb look, often it precedes the exclamative without changing the intent of the utterance. So we said that exclamatives were like, what a nice job you've done. But we often can use look ahead of that, something like, look what a nice job you've done. Okay, are there any other verbs that might work like that? Hmm, that's something to think about. Okay, so um, so think about this. So this is going to close up our discussion about function and what discourse function looks like. Okay, this is a very pragmatics-based discussion now. Okay, so if you are in a room with another person and the window is open, you're cold, so you want the other person to close the window. Think of one sentence you could say to accomplish this. Okay. I thought of more than one. So these are all sentences that we could say to try to get someone to close the window. Okay, would you please close the window? Please close the window. Would you mind closing the window? It's cold in here. What a cool breeze we have today. Close the window, right, as a yelling. Close the window. Um, what, were you raised in a barn? Shut the window. Why is it so cold today? Can you close the window? I'm freezing to death. Brr, could, you, could I get you to close the window? So here are several examples of something that we might say to have an action happen, okay? What does this tell us about language? Well, it tells us that the word order of the sentence does not have a one-to-one -one relationship with its function, meaning that sometimes the same function can be expressed with sentences of different types. So here are some examples, okay? So the function is a request, but the actual structure of the sentence could be an imperative, an interrogative, an exclamative, a declarative, embedded question, um, or just a declarative. So this means that function and form are not directly linked, okay? That function is some sort of other property outside of just the form itself, okay? Um, so one thing we talk about when we talk about discourse function is about politeness, okay? So a softened version of these imperatives, okay? And you might be able to talk about either these as either a declarative or an interrogative, okay? So something like lend me $50 to soften that, right? I don't usually just go up to someone and say, hey, lend me $50. But to soften that, I might say something like, could you please lend me $50? Or it would be great if you could lend me $50 is the declarative. Okay. So there are different ways that we can couch these sentences to try to help give sort of a more polite feeling with those. Okay. Uh, discourse function. Okay. We also have rhetorical questions. So we have lots of times when there's a question that's asked, but we don't actually mean to have an answer. We call these rhetorical questions. So things like, what do you think you're doing? Do you think I'm stupid? Where are your brains? Okay, I also think about, um, there's a request that I use for my children. Um, something like, how many times do I have to tell you to put your backpack in your room? Where the answer of the structure of the question, how many, is a number. They should be giving me a number. But if the child actually gives me a number in response to me asking, how many times do I have to tell you to put your backpack away? It's not thought of as very polite. Okay, so uh, these types of questions, we're looking for either someone to do an action or just to reflect on their actions and to think about it, um, but we're not actually looking for an answer. Okay, so here are some other examples, right? Um, when are these sort of literal and when are these rhetorical, right? So something like, do you have two hands? Which really means like, hey, you should get in here and do it yourself, okay? Am I your maid? Um, we probably, are not asking that um, in, in, a, in a real general question way unless we are just applied for a job and we're wanting to know if we got the job as someone's made. 
Okay, so these are things that um, they could be used as as real questions where we really want an answer, but more often than not, they're used as rhetorical questions where we're trying to have an action or a thought happen for the other person. Okay, so summary. So we have declaratives, interrogatives, imperatives, exclamatives. They describe the structure of the sentence, but not necessarily how they function, right? Because the function is really based on how they're used in the world. Thanks.